Hello friends, welcome to the Odyssey Network. Our today's topic of discussion is a view of Kabir part 2. Part 1 has already been discussed in a previous lecture and this is part of our series on writing in India. And for this discussion we have with us in our studio Dr. Anand Prakash, retired professor English literature from University of Delhi. He has a teaching experience of four decades and uh, he has been associated with us on previous occasions and we are of course very uh, privileged to have sir here with us today as well to um, steer the series on writing in India and uh, with this I would like to welcome sir and uh, request him to begin our today's lecture sir. Hello. Thank you Roshi <coughs> and welcome viewers uh, to this discussion on Kabir once again. Uh, we discussed it uh, once earlier uh, and that was the introductory uh, information and uh, idea about Kabir. And, uh, <clears throat> Today we take up the question a bit more <clears throat> deeply. Uh, <clears throat> let me uh, give a brief recap of uh, what I discussed in the previous lecture. Uh, I was introducing Kabir, giving some details about uh, the life, uh, the, the history, the legend, the uh, his geography as, as I used the word last time. And uh, then of course uh, uh, comment on uh, different aspects of Kabir in general, so that the viewer's interest could be uh, could be generated. It could, could be you know helped. And uh, today uh, we take up uh, a bit uh, different aspect of Kabir, uh, where uh, Kabir is seen as uh, a poet of something. What that something is, that 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 that, that will be uh, shared with you. Uh, in the previous lecture. Uh, uh, it was said, you know, for instance, that Kabir was a people's poet. He was a people's poet. He communicated well with the audience. He was illiterate, and yet he could handle language quite skillfully. Uh, he uh, dealt with uh, complex ideas, and he made them understandable to the audience. Uh, with, the, with, with that kind of language, uh, you know, which comes from wisdom and experience in life, and uh, that experience may not be long, that experience has to be basically genuine, and Kabir lived a very genuine, uh, in, a, in a very genuine sense. Uh, he responded to things very honestly and courageously, without fear, and it is this that might have given him that kind of sweeping appeal, you know, which still uh, is a matter of inspiration for almost all. Uh, why almost for all the poets? Uh, I also told you last time that about the major literary figures of India who was influenced by Kabir uh, was uh, Ramindranath Tagore, uh, who was so much enamored of uh, Kabir's writing, uh, you know, and, and the depth and uh, breadth of his vision, that uh, uh, he, he took uh, a large part of it in his own poetry. And uh, uh, the thought also partly came from Kabir. Uh, imagine uh, Tagore writing in the uh, latter half of the 19th century and the early 20th century, uh, in philosophical terms, that had been already set by Kabir. So that way, uh, this was the introductory thing and uh, today we take it up further. And I say that uh, Kabir initially is thought to be a critic of society. He criticizes society, he criticizes rituals, he criticizes institutions. Uh, for instance, the, the, the religious institution, the cultural institution uh, and uh, uh, Kabir, you know, uh, goes hammer and tongs at it. He, he doesn't spare anyone when he, when he talks about ritual and the structures that uphold the ritual in, in social life. But then Kabir is not merely a critic of society. And if he is a critic of society, then he has some alternative paradigm to offer. This alternative paradigm is the subject of discussion today. What does he believe in? What does he share with the audience? What does he expect the audience to do? The, the, the person who listens to uh, his singing, his recitation, or reads his poetry, what does he expect this person or these people to do? This is what is going to be the, the topic, topic of today's discussion. And uh, majorly, uh, mainly I say that Kabir is a poet of 
not just bhakti which would be you know uh, considering god all the time and focusing upon him but also a poet of love in fact um, uh, if one has to uh, translate bhakti into english uh, it won't be translated perhaps as worshiping uh, as focusing upon god you know uh, the, the way anybody might do but thinking of god in terms of a person thinking of god uh, not uh, in, in terms of a person but in terms of an idea that goes deep down into the heart of the poet himself and where uh, worship and love become one they integrate with each other so if one has to think of worship if one has to think of bhakti then one, one has to think of love also with a capital l and that is what kabir does uh, you know in his poetry and uh, his emphatic use of the theme of love and theme of bhakti in the same breath is what you know uh, is is uh, is a is a thing that you know we can all the time cherish as a value in our life and if we are writers in our writing so i start with this uh, very famous uh, well known couplet by kabir toha by kabir and then i go into the nuances of uh, this concept of bhakti or love and uh, i say uh, i i might have quoted this in the previous lecture also but it, it will bear repetition and uh, uh, if it is quoted and uh, i i quoted like this yah to ghar hai prem ka khala ka ghar nahi shish utare bhui dhare tab baithe ghar mahi now he is talking of this house this house means this world this house means this field of bhakti that he is referring to so if one has to come to kabir and sit with him if one has to share the perspective of kabir then one has to think of love one has to you know accept the idea of love as something that is inspiring and he says my house this house my poetry my writing is the house of love therefore accept this as the precondition for entering my house ye to ghar hai prem ka khala ka ghar nahi it is not any relatives house it's not that you are visiting you know something that uh, on which you have a claim it's not somebody's aunt's house so khala is aunt so do, do not think you know that you have a claim on it you will come only when you earn it when you have worked hard to achieve the claim to entry uh, in, in, into my house and then he says the, claim, the 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 condition that i lay down for you for for the reader for the listener for the person who would sit with kabir who will share his perspective the precondition is that one has to swear one's head with one's own hands she shutare one has to cut one's own head and bhun dhare and then put it on the ground because uh, generally uh, physically <coughs> of course biologically head is at the head is at the top but no you take the head from top of the body and then you put it on the ground bhun dhare tab baithe ghar mai and then you enter my house so now see the implication implication is not merely that you, uh, you you don't have any sense of ego or all that is of course there but also that if you keep the head where it is at the top then you will be governed not by love but by the thinking that resides in the head so put the head down on the ground the other meaning could be that if you put the head uh, on on the ground then you will be able to understand the ground reality the reality of life which is there on the ground you will not bother about those ideas you know which which govern you you will in fact be one with those ideas which emanate from the ground emanate from the the the, the commonality of life so uh, maybe i am interpreting uh, a bit you know uh, strongly but then uh, putting it on the ground definitely has the, has, has this connotation and kabir is a very conscious poet he knows what he is saying he knows which words he is using and if he is using the word uh, bhui dhare then of course he, he means that uh, uh, the knowledge the true knowledge is in your work is in your labor in what you do not in what you think because what you think might come from somebody else but when you do something uh, on the ground of your own with your own hands then you speak from that experience so and uh, uh, the 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 entire couplet then is uh, determined by the concept of prem so prem is important it's a house of love now with, uh, uh, keeping such a concept in mind uh, one of the interpreters of kabir 
uh, you know, has, has made a statement and, and, and I want to present that statement to you here uh, for consideration, for, for, for maybe uh, uh, comment, for, 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 for critical kind of a view, viewing. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the person who has written the statement uh, was instrumental in polishing up the version of Tagore when he thought of translating uh, Kabir's uh, you know, hymns or songs. And uh, this is a lady from, from, from Europe and her name is Evelyn Underhill. Uh, and her name uh, is, uh, goes along with uh, Tagore uh, as a person who assisted him in translating Kabir into English. And this is what in the introduction uh, to this book that uh, Tagore published in 1913 or 14, uh, it, it, the, the, the excerpt comes from there and I share this with you. So she has observed that his wonderful songs, that is Kabir's, survive the spontaneous expression of his vision and his love and it is by these, not by the didactic teachings associated with his name, that he makes his immortal appeal to the heart. She talks in particular, I say, of the wide range of mystical emotion that is brought into play, unquote. And then quote again, the loftiest abstractions, the most otherworldly passion for the infinite. Uh, for her, Kabir's poetry has a double character, and then I quote again, it's love poetry, but love poetry which is often written with a missionary intention. Now, just uh, uh, look at the uh, constructions uh, the, the, that Evelyn uh, uh, Underhill is using here, and I, I particularly emphasize this, his vision and his love. Now, the vision and love are so closely associated in Kabir's poetry that you can't separate them and say this is what the vision is, because vision might be also termed a kind of a statement. But then he has a vision in front of him. The vision is a picture. And then it is the picture of love. So neither is clear that the picture has to say something. And, and uh, uh, love also has to you know, communicate something. But it is very difficult for love to communicate. Love can be felt. But can, uh, can it communicate something as, as a message uh, to, to the person who, who is interested in knowing what love is? Now these, these questions are raised uh, uh, by Kabir in his poetry, that his vision and his love uh, comes out through spontaneous expression. This is what uh, Evelyn Underhill has meant. And then there is a uh, you know, uh, concept of appealing to the heart. Heart means the, the, the center in, in the body of, of, of brain or in the, in, in the body of the human being, in, 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 the, in the structure of the brain, which, 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 which you know, uh, 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 is linked with feeling. So heart means feeling here. Then the, the other phrase is mystical emotion. Now, if somebody is a mystic, that then that person goes into a trance. But then, that is not what emotion is. Emotion has to uh, come with it uh, through a uh, uh, poet's uh, conscious effort. So, uh, mystical emotion are two different things, but they, they, then they come together uh, uh, in, in this case. And therefore, it is emotion that you know determines the quality of, 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 of mysticism. So, it is a mysticism not in, in the abstract sense, but in the concrete sense that somebody feels the presence of ideas, the, 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 the presence of, of, of the principles hidden, in, uh, hidden behind the uh, um, mysticism. The other word that, that draws attention is the passion for the infinite. The infinite, God is infinite. Kabir uses the word, you know, God sometimes. He uses the word Ram again and again, but his Ram is not the son of Dasharath. His, his, his Ram is a concept. His, his, his Ram is a value system. And then uh, there is infinite, uh, in, in infinite variety in the working of uh, the, the, the concept of God. So if that is the case, then Kabir passionately describes it. Now, uh, viewers, I pose a question before you, uh, before I proceed further uh, under this title and in, in, into the discussion, uh, whether you know uh, uh, Kabir is a Bhakt, because he is a, he's a, he's a, he's a Bhakt poet. Is he a Bhakt or is he a poet? Or if, it, if, it, if he is both, then of course, what is he as a poet? So, uh, uh, do you have poetic skill? Uh, does he have poetic skills? Does he feel like a poet? Does he write like a poet? Does he use the techniques of poetry, etc.? These are the questions uh, that can be raised when you consider Kabir as a poet. And uh, because you know, when when he is passionate, uh, when he is when he is uh, full of love, and when he appeals to the heart, then the implication in the statement of Underhill is that Kabir is a poet. 
of course, he is a, he's a, he's a bhakti poet, he is a bhakti poet, but then the poetic part, uh, you know, appeals to all the poets and, and, and poets, you know, are, are generally, because they are driven by, by, by experience and they are driven by emotion, then they transcend the, the ordinary concept of bhakti. So is Kabir a poet? I raise this question and I uh, leave, uh, leave it to you uh, viewers for, for, for understanding and, 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 and for responding to it. Uh, unto yourselves. So the poet has laid great emphasis here on what he calls love. So when he, uh, when he talks about love then we should know what love is as indicated in the first line followed by reference to sacrifice one's life. This is what I have already discussed. Now just see what he, uh, what, what Kabir says about love and about its nature. So I quote another uh, you know couplet uh, by him. Uh, he says, Hate mahi pardo nahi, shabd mahi nahi rai. So, hate means hit, hate means good, hate means welfare. So, when, when you feel, think of goodness, then of course there is no parda, then there is then there's nothing that, 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 that covers it, it is quite open in front of us. And shabd mahi nahi rai, uh, when you talk of shabd, shabd means word, word means sound, then uh, do you use the word because you have to express an opinion? Rai? He, uh, Kabir says no. The Shabd is in itself important. It is not important because there is, a, there is an opinion hidden there. Shabd is important because you utter it, because you like it, because you love it. This is like the poet saying, now do not try to find out what I say, just listen to me. Just listen to the words I have used. Just listen to the, uh, the, the, the sound cluster called the words which appeals to you. So you can't uh, merely reduce a word to its meaning. Word itself is important. And, and uh, imagine uh, literary theory people of the 20th century, uh, they would straight away agree with this. In fact, uh, 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 structuralists and others always talk of the inseparability of language with meaning. In fact, they, they do not talk about the meaning uh, uh, in, in, uh, separately. And uh, I, I think I uh, quoted somebody in the, in the 20th century, was it William Hampson or some somebody who said that, uh, that, that there, is, there is a concept, meaning is the meaning itself is a word. And that, that, that then the book was written, meaning of meaning. So here Kabir is anticipating that, you know, importance of the word in poetry. The word in itself is important, it is a sound and one should try to imbibe the sweetness, the message, the flow, the spontaneity of the sound itself. So, hit mahi pardo nahi, shabd mahi nahi rai, it is not rai. Hit preeti tab janiye, hit means the goodness becomes preeti, preeti means love. Hit preeti tab janiye, bole eka hi bhao. When they, they, they speak the same language, when they speak the same ideas, when they express the same ideas, then one should know that this is what love is. So, viewers, love is a word of course, but then the, the, this, this word stands for a large number of things. And the most important thing about love is that it is love. Now, it is not a truism when one says love is love. It is only that some very subtle uh, idea of love is being conveyed by uh, the poet. And the poet compels us to think as to what he means by saying that love is love or that it is inseparable from idea. Now, here, here hate here stands for genuine interest, as, as I already indicated, whether of oneself or others. So, if you, if you are thinking of your own good or if you are thinking of the good of humanity in general, then that is what hate is, but then it has to turn into love. So, Kabir once again, earlier he invited you to, to his place uh, after leaving your ego behind or, or keeping your uh, ego away from your head and putting your head on the ground, but then here he is talking of uh, love becoming an inseparable part of the good. Uh, in, in, in oneself. Then the next uh, uh, couplet, uh, which is on the same theme but uh, explores a different uh, uh, version of uh, uh, the truth of love, he says, Kaha bhai tan bichure, dur baseje pas, kaha bhai kya hua? What happened? Is it really important? Kaha bhai tan bichure, if somebody uh, you know gets separated from one's beloved, physically, bodily, that the, the, the beloved has gone away or, or the lover has gone away or the friend has gone away, the person whom you love, 
who is the object of your, your love has gone away, does it matter? Only physically one is separated. So, kaha bhai, what happened if the body is separate? Dur basse je pa, paas, if they, if they went away from you, then he says, nena hi antar pare, only eyes cannot see, only eyes you know, are, are, are not able to see because the person has gone away. Pran tumhare paas, the, 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 the life of the person whom you love is with you. Uh, so, then that is what is important. Now, pran once again is a, a very loaded word in Kabir. Pran can be self, pran can be life, uh, pran can be, for instance, out uh, uh, opposite of uh, death, but basically pran is essence. So, essence of love through which the, 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 the beloved has, has, has been, you know, uh, all, all the time with you, it is that which is important. So, never think, you know, that, 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 that you are always to uh, have, have, have the person in mind when you talk of love. What you have to think of is the sense of love, the essence of love, the meaning of love, which is always there and it does not matter whether one is with a person physically or, 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 or not, that is not important. So, viewers, this is a, a definition of love, that in love the idea is important, the, 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 the feeling of liking is important, being one with. Uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the beloved is important and that beloved in the case of Kabir is God or well vice versa you can say that God is the lover and Kabir himself is the beloved. I, I, I touched upon this in my previous lecture that Kabir sometimes uh, when he is overwhelmed by emotion that, 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 then he starts talking in the voice of a woman, a woman who is in love with, with her lord and master and Kabir at that point of time thinks of himself in terms of a woman who loves uh, God and who wants God to come over or, 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 or wants God to always remain with her uh, in her mind. So, uh, uh, because that is what you know the, the word nana has here you know uh, refers to. Nana is generally uh, associated with women, people you know women who intensely uh, look at the person and, and, and give you know uh, give out a lot through, 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 through eyes than, than, than words. But then that which is uh, communicated through words and not through eyes themselves, that only explains what pran tumhare paas means. Pran's, pran means uh, life or essence as I already explained, uh, being with you all the time. Now, the, the same yes, idea. Sir, before uh, we go further, I just want to make a small observation or uh, say just a little thought that he begins by say offering an idea, something that uh, one must ponder upon mm. but at the same time in the second uh, line uh, like you said he offers offers an alternative paradigm or he offers solace to the reader or he will make the reader ha say happy by offering night is that so what that what if it's, it is so that uh, what if the lover is not in front of you mm. the uh, sense of love is with you yes so yes. I found that very interesting sir the, 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 this is precisely as, as you rightly said this, this is precisely the point that Kabir is making that you know, uh, love is not in, in, in the physical sense in which, for instance, Meera would be saying. Meera is a poet of Sagun Bhakti. Kabir is a poet of Nirgun Nirvan. Bhakti. So, when a Nirgun poet talks about love, then that love uh, works at the level of idea, at, at the level of emotion, at the level of passion. It does not uh, talk at the level of the person in front of oneself. So, th this is what you know, pran is important, the presence is not important. In fact, in the case of uh, uh, human. Uh, beings love with God or, or vice versa, the, that human being is the beloved of God, that, that you know, reflects upon the relationship, that does not reflect upon the sight of the person. So, the, so that, that is you have rightly uh, pointed this out and I think this should be emphasized this way. Then the uh, next uh, couplet uh, viewer uh, again uh, uh, touches upon another dimension of uh, love. As, uh, see, you know that uh, the three couplets that I have already quoted uh, 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 before you, uh, these, these, these uh, you know, talk about uh, slight different, sh slightly different shades of, uh, the, of, of the same thing. But since the shades are different, therefore our understanding and comprehension of love is, 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 is further, it becomes widened. And then I quote the fourth couplet here, Aye sakona tuj pe, sakona tuj bulaye. I can't come to you, nor can I call you to me. Now, which means that, that, that the person is separated from, physically separated from the beloved. And therefore says, I cannot call you, I, I can't come to you. Uh, it, it's difficult, it's impossible to reach you. Sakona tuj bulaye, and I can't call, call you to me. 
which means that V V seem to be more or less eternally separated. And then he says, Jira Yuni Leuge. Now see the, the beauty of the dialect here. This is this is the the Audhi or, or or I don't I'm not exactly aware of uh, what, what Audhi is, but I, I think this is Audhi. And see, Yuni Jira Leuge. You, you, you will take my life like that. You, you, will, you will take my heart out of my body this way. Uh, you, you will kill me like this. Jivra yumi leoge. Viraha tapai tapai. That I am separated and uh, that, that is called viraha. So if, if I am separated, then this separation will actually uh, you know, destroy me, will kill me. And uh, tapana means to making, uh, making things hot for me. That, that you know you you will make it so, so difficult for me to bear that you know I I, I can't really live uh, with, with this kind of viraha. So uh, what is viraha doing in mysticism is the question. Generally, mysticism is that you go into a trance, you start singing and dancing, etc. But if you have viraha, then you want something to be with you all the time. So viraha means that that somehow you you lost hold on God and you have to get him back to you. Ram, for instance, Kabir's uh, uh, favorite word is Ram. So, so when, when you think of Ram, then you want Ram all the time to be there with you. But maybe there, there, there is some uh, weakness in, in, in the human being, so, so some problem with the human being. The human being is not worth, uh, you know, uh, 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 getting company uh, from God. Therefore, it's Viraha and uh, the, the, the person feels uh, uh, incomplete and the, 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 the person is, is, is feeling the, the situation of, of heat there. Uh, that, that you know things are uh, 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 completely uh, uh, unbearable at that point of time. So you, you, uh, tapna literally means uh, to, to, to you know uh, face heat. So that way uh, God is uh, in a way uh, making the human being suffer by not presenting himself there but the fault is of the human being and, and the human being has to try more and more hard. So this is a different kind of and when Kabir talks of viraha which is rare, I, I don't think there are many couplets in Kabir which talk of Viraha because Kabir is all the time one with God but then here he says I can't come to you I can't call you to my place and I am without you therefore uh, I, I am having Viraha and Viraha is creating that Agni in me the, 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 that Tap in me Tapna uh, the, the word is Tapna you know when one is burning so, so when, when that sense of burning is there in oneself then uh, Kabir doesn't know what to do and then he is posing a problem. Now my comment, uh, I, I would read out. I know I noted it down as I was, um, you know, preparing for uh, this discussion. Here, pran viraha take the reader to a restless state. So uh, I, I think a mystic is never restless, but a poet is restless. A poet, you know, uh, responds as a human being. So here, Kabir is talking as a poet. He is restless. He is in a restless state in which a person cannot live without one's loved one. If we mark the terms. Then the statement in the quotation. Now think of the terms. There is a discourse in the state. In in in, in the, uh, for instance, the, the, there's there's the discourse of I and you, uh, me and you. Then I can't call you. I can't go towards you. So there is a kind of helplessness. Now see the discourse. The first is I and you relationship. The second discourse is that the two want to come together, or, or uh, the, the I wants to uh, go, go 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 to the you, you means God, and then he says, I have a jira. Now, now this is the jira is heart again. The jira is pran. Uh, what what in, uh, you know, spoken language is called G. So, jira yuhi leoge, birha tapai tapai. Now, just go into the suffering of the person. So, there is suffering, there is separation, there, there, there is, there, there, there is a calling, and, and there, there is incapacity or incapability to go. So, all the, this, this discourse tells that. It's at the human level. It's not at the at, at the level of divinity. The human being feels incomplete, and the whole discourse. And this is where the statement is not important. Now read uh, Kabir's uh, lines not as statements or as dictations, as dictates. Read them as poetry. And when you read them as poetry, then you'll go to the terms of the uh, of, the, of the expression that he's using. So uh, I, I I wrote down if you mark. The term of the statement in the question, in the, in the, in the, then the statement in the quotation, we would see how Kabir is opening up a meaningful window to the aspect of principles and issues that would be conducive to the further evolution of wisdom in society. 
So I would say that Kabir is giving the personal example. Through the personal example, then, then he is uh, broadening the, the, the scope of the expression by, by believing, by, by thinking that all, all of us have the same sense of schism in us, same sense of vacuum in us, and that vacuum uh, can be filled up only when God can finally reach him or he can finally reach God. If that doesn't happen, then the schism will remain. And because it is there, therefore, the human being will keep suffering. So here, suffering is involved, and that suffering takes us to the uh, nature of a human being, nature of a human experience, which, you know, uh, searches for the answer again and again. And, uh, you know, this kind of a uh, language, th th this kind of a concept uh, in, in, in Kabir, uh, shows very clearly, you know, that he is talking at the at the level of humanity, and uh, and and the ideas come and go, and uh, he is trying to reach them uh, as far as possible. But if they don't come, then he'll be in a state of restlessness and help helplessness. In many cases, then uh, I, I I I continue uh, with, with this theme. In many cases, then for Kabir, the word bhakti denotes love, as I have already uh, stated in the beginning that uh, bhakti is not worship worship at all. It is love. It is a feeling. It is a kind of a passion. The words uh, are, are of underhill and it is these words that are, that are to be constant, uh, consistently kept in mind as, as, as one goes, goes about it. Then, you know, uh, I, I uh, particularly, uh, you know, search for this particular, uh, you know, I, uh, I particularly search for this, you know, lyric uh, from uh, uh, Kabir in, in Tagore's, uh, you know, uh, translation. And from there, I went to uh, Kabir's uh, 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 original uh, lyric. Uh, first, I quote the original lyric. Th th then I give you Tagore's translation of it. And you can see that uh, in Tagore, it's, it's a different, it's slightly different kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a version of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kabir's lyric. I, I quote both of you for your appreciation. Bhakti ka marag jhina re. Jhina means? Uh, uh, well, the Tagore has uh, caught it subtle, has, has, has caught it as subtle, but Jina uh, generally in Kabir is thin. Jina is that which is not which is the opposite of thick. For instance, he talks about a chadar which is Jini, that, that, that famous lyric, Jini, Jini, Bini, Chadariya. It is a famous song by, by Kabir. So the word is that it does not hold much, the cloth does not hold much in it because it is Jina. It has, the, the holes are large and it is worn out. But then here, uh, 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 it, it, when you call jhina subtle, then it's a kind of interpretation that Kabir is, uh, that, that Kabir is given by Tagore. Anyway, uh, first let's read this. Bhakti ka marag jhina re. It's a path. And when the path is jhina, then it is unreliable. Uh, it, 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 it can't easily tread it. It's not even. It's uneven path, maybe. That's the meaning. Nahi achah nahi chahna. Now, th this is really uh, paradoxical. You don't like it, you don't not like it. Acha and cha, they are, they are two opposite words. So, you don't like it, first one, and nahi chana uh, is, is, is uh, you neither like it nor don't like it, something like this. You neither not like it nor you like it. Somehow, that it's, it's difficult to express. Uh, let me see uh, whether uh, Tagore can help us in this. And then, you know, Tagore's translation is, Therein there is no asking and no not asking. So in a way, the same, same problem that, that, that I was facing, uh, Tagore also would have faced uh, much earlier in the 90th century or early 20th century. Nahi achah nahi chahana charnam sonrinare. So the real truth lies in the feet of God, charnam, charan. So which means that it is not a question of wanting and not wanting, wishing and not wishing. It is a question of being one with God. And being one with God, uh, now imagine uh, he, uh, there is a kind of one-to-one -one equation with God and that equation is not personal, it is at the level of ideas, therefore it becomes still more difficult to comprehend. Sadhan ke ras dhar mein rahe nishtin bhi na re. So you, you are all the time practicing it, sadhan is practicing and ras dhar is important. Uh, love is always ras, love is never dry. Uh, love is no, uh, never merely ideas, and uh, there is a there is a stream of uh, you know uh, the juice ras rahe nisdin bhina re, and nisdin both day and night both of them remain sweet. 
राग में श्रुत ऐसे बसे जैसे जल मीना रे श्रुत वेल इज अ वर्ड दैट इज कलोकियल एक्चुअली द वर्ड इज सुरत एंड सुरत मीन्स वंस कॉन्शियसनेस और वंस यू नो सेंसिबिलिटी और वंस यू वन सोल एंड द वर्ड राग इज बींग यूज नाउ राग इज टू टू मीनिंग्स है वन मीनिंग ऑफ कोर्स इज लव राग इज लव एंड वेल राग कैन बी इरोटिक लव they 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 love at the level of emotion and drag of course is music which which is fluent so all these things are mixed into or are combined into um, this kind of a concept and then he in he because he can't explain to himself and and, and to his audience they will finally uses a simile and the simile is very important jaise jal meena re the kind of equation that the fish has with water jal and meena that kind of equation is there between shrut and love the consciousness of the human being and the emotion of love so this 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 is kabir at his best where he is talking of the shrut shrut means swarati which means soul and rag love which become one and inseparable sai sevan mein det sir you are so much you know uh, uh, beholden to god uh, you are so much uh, but but uh, uh, somehow kabir will not talk about god as god as bhagwan generally and he is calling calling him sai so sai is more important so sai means uh, he is using the language of the of, of the master at that time sai is swami sai is lord so he will call him lord he will he will call him his master and uh, you, you know that uh, uh, tagore also uh, in many of his lyrics called of the master my master and that's what uh, he would have borrowed from from kabir sai seven mein det se you give your head in order to uh, you know obey god kuch bilam na kinare you don't, don't don't wait too much for this so immediately as you think of the idea of love that very moment you uh, offer yourself uh, in obedience to god and there is no uh, you know uh, delay from your side kahe kabir mat bhakti ka परिवर्त कर दी ना रे आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेड माय आइडिया ऑफ लव क्लियर टू यू आई एक्सप्रेस माय आइडिया ऑफ लव टू यू एंड भक्ति एंड लव एज आई सेड आर हेयर क्वाइट क्लोज टू ईच अदर एंड भाई कोई सदगुरु संत कहावे नैनन अलग जगावे अलग इज नॉट टू बी आई नो कॉल्ड आउट आई एम हेयर प्लीज गिव मी समथिंग यू नो मोस्टली इवन इवन सेंट्स और और योगीज यू नो कम टू बेग फॉर एम्स एट्सेट्रा फ्रॉम फ्रॉम द from ordinary masses then they straight away call out from outside they 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 they, they uh, you know use some word but here the alak has to be uh, you know the, the calling has to be done through nanan through the eyes because what you feel inside your body in, in inside your mind that only eyes can express not words and therefore the whole idea is uh, is, is about uh, incommunicability Of, of 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 the experience of love, and that is what you know uh, makes uh, Kabir's uh, you know task task very difficult here in this particular lyric, and uh, he is as subtle as any great poet would be, and yet uh, he he is able to. Uh, earlier he used the simile Jalminare, and the last one is Nenan Alak Jagave. It's more 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 of a metaphor, more of a trope, you know, where you say things through eyes, you don't say them through words. now uh, uh, we will uh, read out tagore's translation uh, tagore had the uh, ordinary reader in mind in the in the 19th century and therefore uh, he uh, made it uh, you know um, uh, in, in the in the form in which you know things could be explained and just see the explanation of tagore as he goes line by line to tell you what is contained in uh, 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 kabir's lyric subtle is the path of love difficult to comprehend that is therein there is no asking and no not asking so you cannot ask and you cannot not ask cannot not ask means that you have to you are compelled to you can't do without it there one loses one self at his feet there one is immersed in the joy of the seeking joy of the seeking now mark this expression It, 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 it's it's not easy to understand and in, in in one go you know you will be just swayed with the, the simplicity of the language but then the joy of this of, of seeking means that there is joy in the effort the joy is not then reaching the goal so uh, as, as some urdu poets would have said the the joy is not, not in the manzil 
but but in the way to the manzil. So that, 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 that's what uh, Kabir has, you know, talked talk, uh, uh, through through Tagore. Uh, Kabir has uh, you know, expressed this idea that the joy of seeking is to be, is important. So if you are making the effort, that is important. Now uh, you know, slightly in the lighter vein, one can say that viewers, when you uh, you know appear in the exam, then don't think that, that you have to merely succeed in the exam. You should also think that the effort that you are putting up, uh, putting in for uh, for the examination, that effort itself is important. So, so j just you know, uh, bother about that effort, and uh, no, not merely. Uh, would you like to say something on this? So, just uh, reminded me of my school days, uh, college days. But uh, I think that it holds a very positive uh, key to things. Mm -hmm. He's uh, Kabir is not uh, discouraging anyone. He's in fact uh, giving a very encouraging uh, stance that you know that whatever that you want to achieve or. Uh, the idea of uh, joy in the effort of achieving something that the journey is more important than uh, perhaps the final destination. And uh, would you, uh, I ask further question, would you, would you say that you know when you are doing the effort then you also have an enjoyment, enjoyment Absolutely. of learning Absolutely. and the enjoyment yes, of gaining knowledge True, uh, rather, rather than you know, finding the answer. That would be more fruitful than actually reaching the destination. Yes, yes. I, I think that this is what Kabir is, you know, uh, teaches us to do that you know we should we should uh, uh, understand the value of the effort and should not bother much about whether we will reach the goal or not. Reaching goal will come later of its own, but then effort is in, is in one's own hands. So there is one in, uh, 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 there, one is immersed in the joy of the seeking, plunged in the de deeps of love as the fish in the water. So when the fish is in the water, then whether the water is going inside or not, that is not important. The important thing is that the water inside and the water outside, they are one. The lover is never slow in offering his head for his Lord's service. So the world is not God, the world is Lord. And Kabir declares the secret of this love. This is, the, the, this is what Kabir himself said. Secret of love, uh, uh, you know, there is a kind of circumvention here. As I, 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 I emphasize the word nanan here. Uh, uh, Tagore has not, no, not gone into that aspect of the nanan. But then he has uh, in a way given the interpretation that the secret of love has to be just uh, clear, uh, you know, in, in, in the eyes then. I, eyes are not mentioned, but then uh, this is how he understands the last line in the poem. Likewise, the sense of intoxication a human being reaches while in the bhakti is expressed by Kabir thus. Intoxication is important. Pleasure is important. Your, your enjoyment, my enjoyment uh, in, in doing what I want to do, in, in, in loving as, as I want to do, so far as God is concerned and whatever it is. Then the joy of the work, that is what is important and uh, that is what Kabir emphasizes. Now you will see that a bhakt and, and a sadhu and a yogi will not go into all this. Only poet goes into this the, because the poet enjoys the moment of creation. The, the moment of you know doing something, and that moment then uh, you know holds the kind of value which is lasting and abiding in nature. Now just see, uh, this is uh, somebody, uh, this is uh, a poet you know uh, telling the reader that he cannot explain. The poet telling that uh, he is using words just just to uh, make the effort, but whether he succeeds or not in telling what he wants to tell, in sharing with the audience what he wants to share that may come or not come, but actually the task of sharing will be at least done. So the, this is what uh, <coughs> the, the next point, it uh, is naturally leading towards this, that finally words, words are of no avail. Words merely tell us that there is something inside us which needs expression and explanation. But then what is that? That is not easy to find. So uh, I think that, and this has been sung by a large number of people, uh, the, the, this particular uh, lyric and uh, th th this talks about that intoxication which occurs when one uh, you know is in love or when one uh, is, is gone into the depths of uh, what, what Kabir is called bhakti which uh, are the same thing. Man mast hua tab kyon bole? So uh, what, what, what is important is that kind of masti, that, that, that kind of pleasure, that, that kind of uh, sense of being overwhelmed where you, you, you forget as to what you are saying. You 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 you, you, uh, you know, one one starts dancing or one starts jumping with joy because one at that point of time is not oneself, 
and then it, then Kabir says, if one is so much intoxicated, why should one talk? Why should I write? The poet telling the audience, the, the po poet telling the, the, the reader that he is so happy, he is so charged up with the, with the emotion that he does not have, uh, does not feel the need to express what is going on in his mind. So, man must hua, tab kyo bole? Why should one speak? And then he says, hira payo, gaand kathi ayo. If you have found the jewel, if you have found the diamond, then keep it in your pocket. Bar bar wako kyo khole? So, do not open, open your pocket and take out the diamond and then have a look at it because you already have it. If you have it, then do not reveal it. So, that is another you know concept of uh, poetic expression that if you have the meaning inside in, inside you, then why express it? And expressing for whom? Because poet generally writes for oneself. But then, uh, and, and, and see whether it is poetry, whether it is love, it is supposed to be the best of wealth and that wealth is Hira and, and, and Hira one has got. So, uh, one should keep it secret, one should keep it uh, in one's pocket safe there. Halki thi tab chadhi tarazu, in the beginning the tarazu was halki, tarazu is the balance, uh, you know you, you weigh things with the balance, on one side you put the weight, on the, on the other side you put the thing. But then uh, in the beginning it was halki, which means that there was not much weight on the, on the other side, therefore you, you wanted to put some weight, but now it, 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 is, gone, uh, it is gone down, the, the finally uh, uh, when, when it was halki it was going up, then it became puri. Puri means the, 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 the uh, pan came down. Puri bhai, tab kyu tole? Yes, you were supposed to measure things only when the, the, the taravi had gone up, when it was light. But now that it is heavy, it has already become puri. It has become heavy. So why should you measure now? Now you know that you have got what you wanted. If you have got what you wanted, then why bother about uh, confirming that you have got it? You have it, it is clear, the, the, the balance has come down and therefore you have already reached the, the, the goal and be there with, with, with your beloved etc. And then because already you know, one is overwhelmed and now there is no point in measuring it further. Surat Kalari Bhai Matwari, the whole of Surat, Surat is the same thing, the, the, the soul early it was Shruti, now it is Surat, Kalari the whole of it, Bhai Matwari, it has gone mad with joy. So, in, in the other word of, of, of uh, you know intoxication is matwala. So, so it is matwari. Surat kalari bhai matwari madhva pi gai. It has already taken the wine, madhva, madhya. Madhva pi gai bin bole. Without, with, without speaking, it, it took the whole you know glass of wine and uh, it has gone matwari. It has gone mad with intoxication. Hansa pai mansarovar. Taltalaya kyo dole? Already you have reached the last stage, you know, where, where, where uh, Mansarovar is. Mansarovar is, 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 the, is, is, is the highest and, and, and is the best and is the purest, you know, uh, 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 place, a small uh, pool. If you, are, you have gone to Mansarovar already, then why bother about ordinary, uh, you know, swimming pools or, 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 or lakes or, 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 you know, ponds, etc. Taltalaya are the small things. So why bother about them? You already reached the highest. And then uh, once again, uh, God is not called God, He is not called Bhagawan, earlier He was called Lord or Sai or Swami and here Kabir, Kabir is very fond of the heavy world also for God which is Sahib, He called him Sahib. Tera Sahib hai ghar mahi. your Lord is inside your house. Earlier the diamond was inside the pocket and now Tera Sahib hai ghar mahi. bahar mein mein kyun khole? Now this is two meanings and, 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 and please uh, see the, the, the poetic uh, uh, worth of uh, this line. Eyes are supposed to look at things outside, but do you know that, 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 that eye also can look inwards? So Kabir has this concept, uh, in, in Shakespeare you know the, this concept is, uh, is, is defined as the mind's eye. So, the, so there is a, there, there is a, there is a eye, eye of the, uh, there are eyes of the body and there is the mind's eye. So mind also sees, it is not just the eye which sees. And uh, Kabir uh, is uh, just in the flow, he is able to say, Bahar nena kole? Why do you open your eyes towards the world outside? You should open your eyes in fact towards the world inside. So uh, because your, your, your God, your side is inside, therefore you should look inwards. Kahe Kabir suno bhai sadho, sahib mil gai til til ole. 
till only well uh, uh, Tagore has uh, called uh, uh, this expression ravishing my eyes. So till only means perhaps that, I do not know what exactly th th this would mean, but maybe uh, well, well, uh, till Ole could be that I am so happy that that God has come inside me. I already got the till or something. What do you say? <laughs> what can till Ole be? Sahib will go, what else do I need? Something like this. So meaning is clear. Right. But, but then the word is creating a kind of difficulty. And uh, do you have some idea of Hindi, uh, Roshi? Tilk uh, are these uh, uh, used yes. in uh, making laddus. Yes, yes. yes. Mm. Til ole would be a hill, hill, hill storm. No, it is not that. No? It is <laughs> just, you know, that now that you have got God, so why th uh, look for something else? Th why, look, the, why look in another source? In else, another yeah. thing, yes, that is yes. right. And uh, Tagore's translation here would be? Uh, I uh, think we are heading to the. Sir, we are actually uh, uh, sh uh, short of time, so perhaps we could carry this over in another uh, maybe lecture. Maybe I, I can I can take this reference. Uh, and Absolutely, uh, sir. Uh, so I finish uh, in, in uh, just uh, one or two sentences. I say that uh, Kabir uh, first is uh, is talking about a positive framework, a positive paradigm. That is the paradigm of love, and secondly, love makes him a poet in the true sense of the word. And uh, Kabir transcends the, 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 the idea of bhakti, and in fact, bhakti and love become one, so far as he is concerned. So, today we have focused upon this very positive aspect of Kabir's poetry, where he is both uh, expressing an idea of love at the same time doing it uh, in, 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 in a poetic language, in, 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 in an idiom uh, that you know takes him uh, uh, you know, uh, towards the masses uh, at, at, and, and gives him a very close angle. Uh, about, about expression that will unite him with his, his viewer. So I, I finish here and... Uh, thank you, sir, thank you. Uh, so much for summing up. And with this, I would like to thank you again for being here and also our viewers. Thank you and have a wonderful day.